This is the special feature of the Well Run Dry blog. Today, I am covering the Occupy Portland protests. The Occupy Portland protests are a part of a wave of protests against Wall Street greed and the concentration of wealth in the hands of the top 1% of the American uh, public. Zooming in on portions of the crowd now, you can see some of the interesting signs that people have. There's an interesting one, the jig is up. It looks like there are about, oh, three to five hundred people here. There are also a few mainstream media outlets such as Fox. What brings you out here today? Well, a horrible situation in our country. Mm -hmm. Top one percent have all the wealth. Bottom ninety-nine percent are screwed. Ah, that's certainly a way to put it. Um, do you believe that either political party actually represents the people anymore? No, less and less. Less and less. Less and less. Yeah. Mm. I've been a Democrat all my life. But I'm just got to go now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what advice do you have for young people starting off, just graduating from college, uh, perhaps with a lot of student debt, how can they uh, make their situation survivable? Get involved in things like this is about all it's going to, to do it. We have to, to take action. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Okay. So you're an exchange student from Germany? Yeah. What brings you here? Um, I'm here for 10 months now. Uh, but what brings you here today? Um, I'm here from my school to ta tape the whole protest. Uh -huh. Yeah, and make for our news show at the school. At the school? Yeah. What do you think of the economic and political situation in the United States now? Um, I think what I heard about it here it's not very good. Mm -hmm. That's um, there are many poor people here, mm -hmm. and yeah, how but I don't you, really know it. How would you say that uh, life for ordinary people is in the United States compared to Germany? Um, I think here in the United States are the more people are uh, poor. Mm. Yeah. Because um, in our land in Germany, there are not very much homeless people. Mm -hmm. There, yeah, you see some, but it's not like here. Mm -hmm. You see here often homeless people, people who, are, yeah, very poor. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. What brings you out today? Um, I'm out here today uh, basically in protest of the lack of responsibility and accountability that we have in our government and our corporate entities right now. You are a citizen journalist. Yes, I'm a blogger. Yeah. Um, as a fellow blogger, mm -hmm. what do you think of the mainstream media coverage of life in America over the last year? I've been actually fairly disappointed in it, and I've been turning to uh, more and more to alternative news sources and actually foreign news sources. Mm. Um, I found that I get, uh, I oftentimes hear things um, following European newspapers days or even weeks before I find that, hear them in the New York Times or Oregonian or other outlets here. So, so American mainstream media is fairly worthless. <laughs> Or becoming that way. Uh, it, it certainly feels that way to me. It, it doesn't seem to cover the things that I care about. Um, or when it does, it feels very biased. And I'd rather be presented with the facts and allowed to make up my own mind. Would you say that there are many people in the United States who can handle the truth and who would like the truth, but are frustrated because they can't get it? Um, I think that there are certainly quite a few people in the United States that are frustrated they can't get a hold of the truth. And I think we'd find if we had more reliable media outlets that we would have more people capable of handling and um, making decisions based on the truth. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Video, I've got a number of still shots. It looks like the crowd has swollen to perhaps seven or 800 people. 
The Portland police have been very polite and respectful thus far. Um, I've talked to a number of people who have discussed the ways in which they are being victimized by the present economy. The protest has expanded beyond NATO Boulevard. I'm standing on NATO on the opposite side of the waterfront now. And you can see a number of people crossing the street. There are also people uh, on the uh, opposite side from the waterfront on NATO. Um, so it looks like this is becoming a very successful rally. Uh, this is a view of some of the people on the NATO side, or on the, on the west side of NATO. Many people have been honking their horns in solidarity. The human microphone or human megaphone tactic of uh, broadcasting messages has been in use here, as you can uh, tell from uh, some of the audio. Um, I will be taking a few more uh, pictures, a few more still pictures. There's, there's someone honking their horn in solidarity. So uh, here's a little bit more video and audio for you. And some still. There, okay. Um, so you're both uh, not only journalists, albeit for PSU, but you're also students at PSU, is yeah. that correct? I am. Are you Justin? Are you a student? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think the prospects are for college students now in our present economy? I mean, I think it goes without saying that prospects are extremely slim, mm -hmm. and we have a, a huge class of young, a huge group of young people that are essentially economically enslaved because they have so many loans they will never be able to pay off, especially if this economic recession continues. Is it possible for college students to go to go through college without incurring debt? Um, yes, but uh, and I am one of those so far because my parents saved since I was born and inherited much money from their parents when they died. Um, besides that, if your parents don't help you, I don't know. Don't help a person. I don't know how a student can pay for college without. Um, incurring debt unless they get amazing scholarships. Are there young people looking for alternatives to our present system? Um, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Many different kinds of alternatives, including, you know, um, free schools mm -hmm. um, and, you know, being anti capitalist and um, build, trying to build community and uh, realizing that. We don't have to stick with our current situation, that we do have the ability to have massive change worldwide, nationally, locally. Yes. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> totally. Okay. Okay. Um, here is one more video shot, and I think I may have enough uh, juice in my battery for yet another one. Uh, as I said in the last video shot, uh, the protest has spread to the west side of NATO. Uh, there may be upwards of 900 people here now. And it looks like the protest is starting to spread farther uh, to the west toward uh, the Old Town Chinatown Max Stop. Uh, the police are starting to ride west as well. As I've said before, so far the police have been very polite. They seem simply to be here to make sure that nobody uh, gets hurt. Uh, or gets into a dangerous situation. Um, the protesters have been uh, very lively. There's been a very large range of ages of protesters from the uh, very young to the very old, uh, people with many grievances against our present system. So, okay, here is another uh, shot of the Occupy Portland protest. I'm standing on top of the Burnside Bridge, just where it goes over NATO. It looks like there are 
probably over a thousand people now uh, on either side of NATO. Wow. Here is the west side and then of course the waterfront. Uh, some people have crossed the street into the west side of Portland and um, I ran into some people from a local union also who were joining the Occupy Portland protest. I'll try to uh, get another couple of still shots and then I think that will be it. Here's a close-up though of uh, some of the crowd. So you can see what's going on. As I have said, many, many people uh, even drivers driving past the protests have been very supportive. So what brings you to Occupy Wall Street today? Or uh, Occupy Portland, I'm sorry. Right. I can't yeah. speak for anybody else, but mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a beautiful thing that people in the United States are finally realizing what the real roots of the problems that we're having are that uh, it's Wall Street, right at the bottom of every every major problem we've got. Hmm. And uh, people are finally waking up to it. And so that's, I'm here to support getting that word out and, and be here with people to try to change that. Now, over the last, you, you're all a family, over the last two years, how have things changed for families? How have things become more difficult? Well, for instance, my parents lost their farm. Hmm. And my brother just lost his home. Both of them were screwed over by Wells Fargo. They were promised to refinance, and then it was snatched out from under them. Their houses were put up for auction, and they sold the next day. Wells Fargo has uh, been in the news also for subprime loans to minorities. Um, do they have a history of uh, shady dealings with people? One of my girlfriends is in a class action lawsuit with, against Wells Fargo and when they were t doing the same thing to her that they did to my parents which was telling her they lost her paperwork and that mm -hmm. she needed to send it in again she mm -hmm. found out that the person she was talking to on the phone was a temp and that in fact everyone in the office was a temp people who didn't know their jobs mm -hmm. um, what challenges do you think there will be for raising children in times like these? I want to send my daughter to college. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I'll be able to do that, the amount of debt I'm going to have from my own education. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, and good luck to all three of you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Okay.